Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Gates and I am the IT Director at Next Level Church in Southwest Florida. And I wanted to make a video to show our server and networking infrastructure, kind of give a walkthrough of, of how we do networking and servers and storage and uh, handle all of our uh, data and all of our videos, which is quite a large amount. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Before we go inside, I just wanted to cover how uh, we get power into our IT room. Uh, the first way is very obvious, and that is through uh, utility power provided by Florida Power and Light. Uh, that comes right into these disconnects here and services our entire campus. Um, but obviously, we live in Florida, and power outages are inevitable. So to uh, power our IT room, we have a 22 kW, kW Kohler generator that is fed by a 500 pound underground propane tank. Um, and right next to it, you can see our fiber splice box to get fiber in from the outside world. Um, after 15 seconds of power loss, the generator will kick on and will take the entire load. Every Monday, uh, a 30 minute full load test does run to ensure the generator is working um, properly. Okay, we're now gonna walk into our IT room, which is a modified room that we had to make into an IT room. Uh, so the first thing you will see when you walk in is an AC unit cooling this room off. It is a three and a half ton unit. Um, if you look to the left, it's all of our power uh, transformers and uh, breaker boxes there. But then if you look to the right, it is our IT rack, which I'll go over what everything is inside. Um, this room had to be modified into an IT room. It was not built with IT in mind. And so um, what we are gonna be doing is building a new office complex where we will then go ahead and uh, put a proper IT data center actually in. So I'll just go from the very top. Uh, the first thing you see there on top is obviously a patch panel. Uh, there are some endpoint devices on this end of the building. And so they get fed into this room directly and then come through these patch panels into our uh, two one gig switches. These two one gig switches service uh, not just those endpoint clients, but then anything that is on in our IT rack that requires a one gig uh, connection. Obviously, uh, we have um, enough, we don't have that much stuff plugged into them and we could condense them down to one, but just for redundancy sake, we do have two of them. Um, and we tend to keep client endpoint devices on one switch and keep all of our infrastructure on another switch. Um, from there, uh, we have obviously a brush pass-through, kind of just help neaten the cables coming from the rear end. And working our way down, uh, we use WatchGuard for our routers and firewalls. Uh, here, being in the main room, this is uh, the router that handles um, everything for all of our campuses. We have Ethernet network services or Metro E connections from Comcast, so they come into this router over fiber. Our internet comes over fiber. Um, we have multiple internet uh, service providers. Our primary is Comcast dedicated fiber internet. Our second is Comcast coax, uh, coax modem standard. Um, and our third is actually Verizon 4G LTE. They all come into here, uh, get serviced. This is our IPS, this is our firewall, our gateway AV, um, everything like that. And then we have uh, the same, not the same model, a little bit reduced model at our satellite campuses that handles the routing for that campus. The next item down you'll see is this little black box right here. And all that is is a uh, FS, FXS um, box for our, from our VoIP phone system. We use 3CX. And all that do, do, is doing is handling, uh, getting copper lines out for uh, our fax machines or our burglar alarm and fire alarm systems. And the next thing down you'll see is actually a rack mount uh, Mac Mini. That is our uh, Mac OS server uh, that we are using to host a couple of applications that our creative arts team uses. Um, nothing really too much, uh, less and less stuff keeps uh, getting hosted on there. The next thing down you will see, uh, we use uh, Dell EMC for our storage. We have a Unity array that currently has the capacity of 50, uh, 54 terabytes. Uh, we love this thing, we have a mixture of uh, solid state, SAS and Nearline SAS in all three of these uh, enclosures. And this hosts uh, all of our video data, which there is a lot. Uh, video data takes up about half uh, half the storage. The other parts of it is our uh, Hyper-V, um, 
VM data, uh, files uh, from users and all that. So after that, you work your way down and the next thing you will see is a EMC data domain. That is our data protection device. That is the hardware. It performs backups of all of our virtual machines. Uh, it performs nightly backups of all of our SQL servers and everything that is going on there. Uh, we, we use uh, EMC's Avamar uh, platform to handle the software side of it and it works fantastic from that perspective. The next thing down is you will see a, uh, a router and uh, a cable, a fiber cable tray, and essentially that is how the Com our Comcast fiber internet and uh, Metro E connection is coming into our data center. The fiber is ran behind and then ran up and into our router here uh, via the one gig connection for the internet and a 10 gig connection for the uh, Metro Ethernet. Working our way down, you'll see a, a modem that is carrying our 4G LTE uh, service. Right now, only one of the modems is active, but we do have a backup modem in the event the primary fails. Our primary is uh, Verizon. Our backup is AT&T. Verizon around here has better uh, cell service, and we get about 90 megs uh, down. It is our third ISP in the event our primary and secondary fail. Rarely does that happen, but we are a disaster re uh, recovery location uh, when it comes to natural disasters that had happen, that happen in the area. We respond to them uh, from a community perspective, and this was very helpful during Hurricane Irma when it hit, provided us internet so we could provide disaster relief efforts to the community. The next thing down, the next items you'll see is our servers, uh, the very top server is uh, really it's just an HP server that is rebranded. Uh, we use Genetech for our access control system, and that is the server that hosts uh, Genetech. Um, it hosts, uh, it could be virtualized, but they do not support it. And uh, to maintain support with them, they require a physical box. I don't like that, but it is what it is. The next box you will see is an HP uh, DL380 Gen 9. That is one of our hypervisors, and you'll actually see the other two hypervisors right down below. These are our hypervisors. We host about 30 virtual machines across the three, and we have plenty of room. Um, one can fail, one entire hypervisor can fail, and the other two will take the load. Stuck right in the middle is a DL360, and that is our primary domain controller that you see right there. And so that is all the physical server infrastructure we really have on this property. We will be adding another hypervisor to host a uh, pretty beefy application and SQL uh, because of the CPU and memory it does take. So that is uh, all of our servers. Below that, you will see our battery backups. We do have a lot of battery backups. And uh, the main reason for that is we did not have a generator at one point, so we required more life on the batteries now we do not and so once these guys really become end of life and and we can decommission them we will get smaller battery backups which will also give us more room in our rack and so that is the front side to our uh, infrastructure now we are going to move to the back side just so, so i can show you what it looks back there okay so this is the back side there isn't too much back here on the top you'll see there is a pdu um, that is mostly for anything that does not have two power supplies. Um, really, it's more of our firewall and some of the smaller items. Uh, ra uh, not really the uh, the routers on. Yeah, the router, um, the FXS, the Mac Mini is on there. And then really for anything that is dual and redundant, our 10 gig switches, our servers. We do have two APC uh, PDUs down the side. They are monitored. Um, on our network, we use PRTG to do all our monitoring. Next up top is our 10 gig fiber uh, switch. These are our core switches. Handles all of our uplinks, handles all the feeds from the other buildings. There is one one gig uh, connection still in here, and that is uh, actually from another uh, building that has a legacy switch. Not many people actually work out of the building, so we don't really have the need to put a new 10 gig switch in there right now. Um, every server, uh, every storage device, everything you see has a dual uh, redundant uh, 10 gig connection for every network it's on. 
so you'll see on the back of our uh, EMC storage array, every um, storage processor has two 10 gig connections, a primary and a secondary. Um, obviously has primary and secondary management cabling, and that goes for everything else. Everything uh, has a primary and secondary uh, 10 gig connection. Um, the reason why the hypervisors have four, two of them go to our storage network, two of them go to our access network. Um, even our uh, even our domain controller has, even though it's on the one gig network, has dual um, one gig connections to it. Thank you for watching and uh, like the video and comment down below. Um, I'm always up for taking ideas and suggestions on how to make uh, this better, how to make our infrastructure better. And uh, thank you and have a great week.